Hi, welcome back. This is Andrew Sears again, and this session is going to focus on applying a lot of the concepts of the lean startup for the education industry. So let me just start off and talk a little bit about um, what's called waterfall um, program design, and that comes from the project management world. This is the basic model that um, where we get our academic assessment model from. And I took a you know eight credit hour uh, doctoral level assessment um, program, so I learned all I wanted to know about assessment, and I, I've been doing it for quite a year, few years um, as a college president. And the basic model is that, in the idea behind waterfall, is that you're going to go through a sequence of stages. And you're going to do the first stage before you go to the next stage, and that's the idea: is you're going from one waterfall to the next. So the assumptions that are built into this um, model of assessment that, that is typically called the backwards program design, and the idea is that you start with um, your outcomes, and then you create assessments, and then you um, create instruction, instruction and assignments um, based on that. Um, there's challenges to that, given the fact that the world's changing so quickly. Um, and I, I think that you know this model was intended to improve quality, and I think in many ways it can do that in, if these assumptions are, are correct. Um, but it can actually impede quality if the assumptions aren't correct. And now let's just look at each of these assumptions. So um, you know one of the assumptions that the audience is traditional students, um, and you know we all know that that is something that's dramatically changed. So 73% of college students are non-traditional. Um, so there may be cases where you might be designing courses and you don't know who your audience is going to be. Um, so that creates issues. So that's you know a challenging assumption. Um, the next is that you know we're doing outcomes for well-defined fields. So there are a lot of fields that are very well defined and um, it's easy to say here's the outcomes that we want. Um, but everyone talks about the quote that increasingly we're preparing students for um, jobs that don't exist. And, you know, a lot of people say, how do you prepare students, um, you know, if you don't know what, what they're going to be doing? And, you know, a lot of it is you teach them how to think and, um, you know, you provide a good uh, general education. But I think that there's also an important role to staying current. So if, if you're teaching accounting and you're using the accounting rules from 1950, that's not going to be helpful or you know, same with any sort of technology um, field, you have to stay current. So there's a lot of things that, that's changing. And because of that, the assessments, um, it's going to be challenging that, to have known assessments. So, and then the last assumption is that, um, you know, you're assuming that the content is going to be known. So, you, you know, there's well-defined books in your field. Um, and in many cases, you know, there, there's the quote recently that came out that 90% of the world's data was generated in the past two years. Um, for a lot of the courses I do, I do my courses in very innovative fields. Each year I do courses, I would say 50% of the content that I did the previous time is obsolete and there's radically different content. So all this goes into how do you design academic programs, how do you run educational programs, how do you design courses if the pace, the pace of change is accelerating. So that gets into a problem that um, computer scientists have really looked at. So in the computer science world, um, they, there's development me methodology. So there's the waterfall development methodology, and that's how mainframes were designed in, in a lot of older systems. In the past 10 years, um, in, in maybe 15 years, there's been a new framework called Agile, and um, in the past five or ten years, there's been a new framework called Lean Startup. And to, to understand, you know, which development methodology do you use, it depends on what sort of situation you're in. So Waterfall applies where you have a known problem and you have a known solution. So there, and, and that's the way a lot of the educational systems been designed, is, is you're assuming you have a known problem, you have a known solution. Now what Agile does is you have a known problem, but you don't know how to best deliver on that problem. Um, and then the Lean Startup is you don't know what the problem is and you don't know what the solution is. Now let me talk 
a little bit more about, you know, what is the design methodology look like? So waterfall, you know, that's a backwards design traditional assessment plan. And you might have a three to five year cycle, um, you know, for, for bigger projects, you might have a 10 year cycle where you develop a plan, um, you build it, you release it, and then you get customer feedback. So that makes sense where your capital costs are really high and where speed to market isn't that important. Um, so a lot of manufacturing uses um, waterfall method. Now Agile, um, in, some, in the software world, that's also called Scrum. Um, what you do is you build and then you release. Um, you know, you might do that weekly. You might do it every other week. Um, but the difference between Agile and Lean is Lean is you build, release, you get customer feedback. You, then you build, release, and you get customer feedback again. So there's dramatically different approaches. And um, the entrepreneurial world has come up with a uh, set of practices that are helpful whenever you're in a radically changing environment. And, and these have been, in many ways, codified in, in the book, The Lean Startup. And this is the, the primary diagram behind The Lean Startup. And the idea is you're going to start with, you know, over on the left, and you're, you're going to start with the learning. And, you know, the first time it's just an idea. And then you're going to build something, you know, and you're, you're going to build a, a product. And, and there's this term they call the minimum viable product. And you, you hear about websites being launched on, you know, do I design this million dollar product? And the way they decide it is they don't design the product. They, they get a graphic designer to show an example of the product and then ask for people to, to be put on a wait list um, to find out more about the product. And if it sells, then they go ahead and build the product. So, so that's an example of a minimum viable product. And then um, you're, you're going to measure, see what happened with that, um, you know, look at the data, and then you're going to learn. And, and there's this term called pivoting where most startups um, in high tech startups, they don't know um, what their business model is. So they don't know who their customers are going to be. They don't really know what their product is going to be. Um, so you know, the, what will happen is they will go and they'll have conversations with customers um, based on their product. And then they'll, you know, find out after talking with, you know, five or 10 customers, is this viable? If not, they'll, they'll tweak their, their product. And a lot of the high tech companies that you find out there, they're following this methodology. I would say this is probably the dominant me methodology in Silicon Valley. Um, so, and I, I believe that this is increasingly going to be helpful in education. Now, in the next slide, you know, I look at a, a problem, you know, let's take the biggest challenge we can get. How do you reach 6 billion people without access to higher education? And I think, you know, the biggest part of that is you're going to have to design for four unrelated uncertainties. Part of the reason why I, I look at that is, you know, I think there's a lot of access driven um, institutions like the one that I lead, City Vision University, that are, are looking at this, this um, question seriously. So you start off and, you know, the, the basic idea of the base of the pyramid is you have to present something that's going to be affordable. So depending on how affordable you can make it, then you're going to have, you know, various costs. So you're going to look at what's content available, what, what's your basic goals, then you're going to have costs. Um, so then depending on your cost, that's going to affect your students. So do you have a $1,000 degree? Do you have a $10,000 degree? This is a real situation um, for us at City Vision. So we had a $6,000 a year degree. So that was a $24,000 four-year degree. Um, we replaced it um, with another product that was a two-year associate's degree and uh, four, for, for $2,000 and a four-year um, bachelor's for $5,000. So all of a sudden, we're going to have a completely different set of students. So then you know, we're, we're looking at those students and we're saying, you know, what goals are realistic um, with these, these students. So in some cases, you know, we're identifying um, there's a, a dramatically increased need for uh, English composition that we didn't anticipate. So, you know, we have to add that in. And then as you do that, then um, you're going to see different cost um, goals in students. And, and what they're going to do is you know, I'm going to evaluate what content's available to meet those goals. So I'm going to look at some of the MOOCs available. I'm going to look at some of the open education content available. I'm going to look at some of the courseware available, and I'm going to look at building my own. And so I look at those goals, and then I, you know, 
will acquire some of that content and then all of a sudden that's affecting my cost. So then I go back, you know, around this, this curve. So I think increasingly this is the world that um, institutions are going to be playing in. And I think it's helpful, you know, I think that the traditional assessment model is helpful, but I think it's also helpful to look at this um, lean startup concepts for education. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. I'll provide some more links um, that you should be able to use. So um, please post your comments. Thanks a lot.